Welcome to the Barbarian Hour podcast, where we conquer the impossible. The Barbarian Hour podcast is presented by Barbarian Apparel. Here is Jared Opfer and Zeb Miller. Are you ready? Coach Joel Greenley, the head coach of the Ohio University Bobcats, the two-time All-American, is on the Barbarian Hour tonight. Second and fourth in the NCAs for the UNI, the Panther train. And you are actually from like what, 20 minutes away from UNI, Joel? Yeah, 20, 25 minutes. Pretty close. Like right there. So Waverly and UNI are it's it's right up there. And is it it's north? Is it north central or northeast? Northeast. Northeast. So northeast. northeast Iowa. You grew up in northeast Iowa. Uh, a farm kid from Northeast Iowa. And then you also have a brother who's an NCAA finalist and Justin Greenlee, right? Yeah, he's a two-time finalist. Two-time finalist. He actually broke Kerry McCoy's win streak, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, we beat him in the semifinals, I want to say, my brother's senior year. Yeah, so he broke McCoy. So McCoy had like a, McCoy's junior. Yeah, McCoy had a really long win streak and – Justin Greenlee broke that. Now, Justin Greenlee and Joel Greenlee are brothers. But one guy is – how call, how tall is Justin, your younger brother? Uh, Justin's probably 6'6", six, six, and he's got a, a son that, that's at Iowa State this year that's probably 6'7". Your nephew's 6'7", six, Joel? Oh, he's huge. He's a monster. Is he a 97 or a heavyweight? Heavyweight. Heavyweight. Oh, my God. And what did he – he won state in Iowa, didn't he, a couple times? Two-time runner-up. Two-time runner-up. What was his highest we, we like to get second. We like to get second in the Greenleaf family. I, <laughs> you won Iowa. You and your brother both won Iowa, didn't you? Yeah. So yeah. you got yeah, – okay, not entirely true. BS statement, whatever, I got to call you on it. But I, I, I get it. The NCAA tournament, you guys got some runner-up finishes. Okay, I, I got that. I get that much. But so he is a fr- – is he a freshman or sophomore at Iowa State? He's a freshman. He's incoming this year. Incoming this year. Okay, so this is his first year freshman. How big is he? Like 240? How big is that guy? Oh, Gabe's probably 245, 245, something like that, and getting bigger by the day. Oh, my God. You guys are just Viking humans. You're massive people. <laughs> but but Justin is, like, skinny like a basketball player. He's long and lanky, whereas you're just this mountain of a human. Like, you're – Physically, when I see you, you're like a Im- physically imposing figure. What are you, 6'4"? Six, yeah, 6'4". So you used to be 6'5", I think. No, nah, well, I'm, I'm getting shorter. That's for <laughs> sure. <laughs> Gravity gets us, man, right? Uh, yep. uh, you know, when we started out, first things first, I committed to Ohio University when you were the interim head coach. How many years have you yep. been the head coach now, Joel? Counting the interim 24. year. 24. 24 years. So your first year was 97, 98 as the yep. interim head coach. I want yep. you to tell everybody as an interim head coach for Harry Huska, the legendary Harry Huska, what was your interim head coaching year like at the NCAA tournament? Go. Uh, it was amazing. Obviously we had two studs that year and Dwight Gardner and, uh, Sean Enright, um, had both guys in the finals. I mean, it was, hey, you went to a round, wrestled a match, got the heck out, went back to the hotel and relaxed. Uh, you know, they, uh, Enright had had some great guys. He wrestled uh, Whitey Klebo, Angle, uh, Ensrud from Oregon. And then uh, he, he obviously lost to uh, Ironside in the finals. And then uh, Dwight beat um, Hardell Moore in the finals. But he had, uh, I think, Timor Terry in the semis, a uh, guy from Hofstra in the quarters, and I, 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 I it, it's uh, escaping me who he had first round. So these guys, you're you're the interim head coach. You you replaced Harry Huska, who's in retirement at that point, and we don't even know if you're going to be the head coach. And I remember when we were getting recruited, and I remember coming down. And these, and it was after these guys had this amazing run, and I was like, yep. "Oh my God, how does this, how does this guy top this?" But you guys got all Americans. 
you have consistently have all Americans year in and year out at Ohio University. You always have tough junkyard dogs. Was the junkyard dog, was he your last all American? Was Walter your last all American? Yeah. 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 It's, Without- it's, it's crazy, but you always got tough guys like that. And you do so well in Ohio. And, you know, Illinois is a state that you, you know, you uh, recruit pretty well. Iowa is a, a state you recruit pretty well. You recruit out of state pretty well, Joel. How do you think, you know, after that first year, you have this crazy tournament, right? And how do you come back down after that and settle in? You know, you're the only guys when Central Michigan won all their MAC titles in the 90s and 2000s, you were the only one that could yeah. really beat them. You beat them in 2001 at your place. I got third, and I lost right. in the true second match, and your guy kicked the tar out of me in the uh, semifinals. Dan yeah, Bednar. Bednar. Yeah, he kicked the tar yeah. out of me, and they seated me ahead of him. They seated me ahead yeah. of him, and you guys are real mad about it. And I was like, yeah, he's better than me. <laughs> they, that, he beat, that, me, you know, he beat me bad. He was good, man. He was really good. And he's a Brexto He was a two-time guy. qualifier, I think. Yeah, and a yeah, Brexto Brexto. Guy, right? Yeah. So you guys have always done a really good job of recruiting Northeast Ohio as well. You know, I mean, when you got Jake Percival, that was amazing to me when you guys got Jake Percival, you know, he's a four time all American, you know, he's right there to win an NCAA title. And, you know, what, what was Jake? He was third, fourth, fifth, second, second, third, fourth, fifth. Is that what his placements were? Uh, well, yeah. I think oh, it was yeah. Fourth, it was se- fifth, fourth, fourth, fifth, fifth, second, third. Yeah. In that order. Yeah. In that order. Wow. Cause he was fourth as a freshman. That was the year he beat Zadik. Yeah, he he beat Zadig by fourteen in the quarters. In all honesty, I, I think he should have uh, or could have. I'm not going to say should have. He got turned by um, saw the kid from Minnesota. I can't remember his name right now. And ne- the next year, that was on the rules video. It shouldn't have been three points. And if that doesn't that doesn't happen, he he makes it into the semis. Was it Jared Lawrence? Yeah, Jared Lawrence. Very good. Yeah. Wow. So it, what's crazy is your first five years as the head coach, you had amazing run. You had an amazing run. You had an All-American in that first five years. I want to say three out of the first five years, you had an All-American. You had a national champ, multiple finalists. It's crazy. Dad was an All-American in there at heavyweight too. Yeah, oh one. So you yeah. had an All-American in 98, 2001, 2, 3, 4, 5? You had an All-American yeah. six out of the first seven years you're the coach. It's amazing. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. What we do in wrestling, Joe, we really measure you guys on All-Americans. You know that. Yeah. Is that fair? Uh, it all depends on what you're trying to do. I mean, I, I, I think they're – like being an All-American, man, I, I want every guy on the team to be an All-American. I want them to experience that. But I, I want a lot more – from them too. I want them to get a meaningful degree. I want them to be good citizens. I want them, you know what I mean? So uh, I, in a way, no, I don't think it's fair, but uh, how else are you going to do it? When I think about it, I just, I just don't, I think it's such a, it's really unfair how, you know, the, how, how fans, how parents, how other coaches and how the media really treats you guys as coaches and our, and our student athletes. I don't like that mentality all the time. I think that that you got to have an all American or you got to be an all American or you're a failure. You just literally said all the things besides being an all American that really matter. And most of your guys graduate, right? Most of your guys graduate. Hopefully they all graduate. Yeah. But I don't ever hear of having Ohio university's not having APR issues, right? No, 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 not not at all. We've had out of the last, uh, Five years, we've had th- at least three 1,000s in our APR. So you get my point. That, that's the most important thing. That's what they should be measuring you on. But, but, you know, fortunately and or unfortunately, however you want to look at it, you know, it's always that all-American thing, right? It's always that all-American thing. And, you know, for me, one of the toughest guys I've ever seen to wrestle at the NCAA tournament is Cody Walters. What Cody Walters did in Madison Square Garden – was incredible because he tore his ACL first round, didn't he? First round, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I will easily say this: that that was 
one of the toughest guys I've ever coached. He he was a great wrestler, don't get me wrong, but he wasn't a super athletic guy. He was just a tough son of a gun and refused to lose. You know, you look at him running, you look at him, you know, doing doing some athletic things. You're like, eh, I don't know about this guy. But when it came down to just being a tough SOB, he was – that's what he was. He was, you know, the standard. I, he was the standard for me. Toughness, right? Yeah. Yeah. Does he – did he, he – okay, so he's not at WVU anymore. He just moved back to Northeast Ohio. And he had, he just he's a new father, right? I think he had a kid in the yeah, last week. Has, uh, I, I, last month, baby boy. Oh man, uh, they keep coming. The it, just keep coming, man. I know we're we're trying to get him a national letter of intent now. <laughs> NLI. Hey, my kids are sending, <laughs> signing NLIs to uh, Edinburgh. I already got it. Already got it figured out. I like the cost, of Edinburgh. I like the cost and what, <laughs> what it costs to attend Edinburgh. I already, told, I already said something to Matt Hood. I said, draw him something up right now. We're signing right now. I want him coming there. It's not that far from my house. I, I can I can get on board with what Edinburgh is charging for room board and uh, tuition. I, I'm, I'm in. Sign me up. But, Joel, you guys, um, when I was, you know, you were only, for the longest time, you only had a grad assistant, right? Yep. Yep. That was like the big thing. You always had a grant assistant and they never fully funded you guys as far as coaching scholarships and all these different things. What yeah. are you guys, what's that? I said, yeah. Talk about what Rock, is bring me a charger and extension cord. Uh Oh, uh Oh, we're, we're in char- Oh, hold on, man. Hold on, man. I got to give you the business a little bit here right now. Oh, we're good. We're good. <laughs> Yeah, it's the barbarian hour, not the barbarian five minutes, Joel. Come on. <laughs> Jeez, I'm on my phone all damn day. No, I, I know. I, it's you don't have the little low, portable I... deal? You don't have these guys? You don't have like little guys like this? Little you don't have, Zab, you don't have when, when when did when did you go to college, Zeb? When did I go to college? Yeah. Nah, nineteen ninety eight, Joel. I I went in the eighties, buddy. We didn't even have cell phones. <laughs> It wasn't a worry. We didn't either. (laughs) We didn't either. Okay. Talk assistant coaches with me because you've had some turnover. You've had some guys go to the enemy. You had Coach Huff, Coach Heffernan. Uh, Colin Heffernan went back to his alma mater, Central Michigan. Um, You've had a a couple other guys leave. Colt went and took the Ashland job. And ultimately, uh, you guys got assistant coaches. And and, uh, what, what, uh, who's the other UNI guy? Oh, yeah, the, uh, Kyle Hansen. Kyle Hansen. He was coaching in Brighton, Michigan. Um, you know, uh, we, we've had quite a few guys take take different jobs. Bob Patnitsky went to, had the Davidson job for a while. Now he's at Penn State. Uh, is it Barron? Brethren? Yeah. Barron? Barron, yeah. I believe it's Barron, yeah. So we, we've had quite a few guys get, get college jobs. Uh, Adam Whitlatch is the head coach at uh, Southwest Oregon Community College. So, Yeah, so, so you've had some guys, but who's, who's new? Who are the new faces that I can expect to see on, uh, in, in green, in Bobcat green? Well, Shakur Laney was a MAC champ for us. Uh, wrestled, you know, varsity four years for us, national qualifier. He, he'll be our second assistant, and, and we just hired him maybe a month ago. And about a week after we uh, we hired him, uh, Hef, Hef was offered a job to go back to Mount Unpleasant and uh, decided to take that. And, um, you know, so we were looking for a guy, and it, it's a uh, not a great time to hire an assistant right now, but we, we went and – Turned over as many rocks as we could, and we think we found a pretty good guy in Hunter Steber, and uh, he's going to be in Athens shortly. When you look at that hire, that's a mega hire, by the way. That's that's a huge hire because what him and his brother did by going to Ohio State, you know, they 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 did. You know, you guys knocked off Central Michigan in the MAC. They knocked off Penn State in the NCAs. That it was largely on the Steber brothers. If you look at it, the leadership of it, without the, a doubt, right. Without a doubt. When you get a so, purebred winner, a purebred winner like that, how do you trans? How do you almost like transform that into winners and, and, and that attitude for your guys? 
Uh, you know what? That's something I'm super excited about. I mean, I, uh, I think, uh, it, you know, I, I do think you're right. It's a big hire for Ohio University. We're excited about it. It's a big name. Um, we think it's going to pay off in recruiting. And obviously the guy knows how to wrestle, knows what he's doing. Um, man, it, it, it's exciting times for us. He wrestles a lot, and he got bigger since um, he left Columbus, and he went out to Norman. And I've seen him, and he looks good, man, and he wrestles good. And I think he's healthy now, too. You know what I mean? He had the elbow issues. Man, yep. I think one year they did an operation on every limb that guy had. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that because I think they took the tendons for his elbows from both of his knees. Ask him when you see him. I remember him telling well, him. I remember, like, so I was the coach of the Pan Am team in the year that he got hurt. Uh, and he actually won the gold medal in the Pan Ams. Comes off the mat talking about his elbow hurts a little bit. Um, you know, and I, I remember flying home and saying, hey, make sure you get that looked at. And that was kind of the start of, of his elbow problems. Here's but, the wildest. You know, I, I, I'm excited about it. I think he, he brings a lot to the program. I think, uh, obviously, he knows wrestling and he knows, knows how to get guys to compete at the highest level. And, um, Hopefully, you know, he, he helps our guys out as well. What I'm going to tell you about Hunter Steber is if you were like to ask me if there were like people that if, if I was like, a let's say, an organized crime. And if it was like they could capture one of my guys to torture and not have us say a word and, and be able to like live through all the torture that all the horrible things they could do. Literally, the toughest human I've ever seen in person is, is Hunter Steber. I'll put I Walters agree. in there. And then there's this dude named Big Country Roy Nelson in MMA. I saw him get yeah. knocked out on his feet five times one night in the UFC. I was actually at the fight in Oakland. And three people I've ever – the three toughest dudes I think I've ever seen are Roy Nelson, <laughs> Roy Nelson, Hunter Steber, Cody Walters, guys who have a threshold for pain out of the, out of the building, man. Like, it, it's unreal. And that toughness, I think you can – I think you can make guys tough, Joel. Do you agree with that? I think you can. I think they have to be willing to do it. And that's, you know, we, that's what we talk to our team constantly about is, man, I, I, want, I want to walk into a gym and have other coaches go, I don't want to wrestle those guys. I don't want to – they're in good shape. They're tough. They just keep coming. And, and we constantly talk to our guys about that. Um, you know, maybe I was, maybe I wasn't. I think I was one of those guys. Um, and I definitely think Hunter's one of those guys. And, and uh, that, that's what we really want to be built on. I look at, you know, you, you want your guys to be gritty. Uh, you know, last year was a tough year for everyone, Joel. And um, you guys got hit especially hard by COVID. And, um, man, it was just tough because you had all this crazy stuff going on, all these just wild protocols, testing, you know, contact tracing, all these different things. How do you think you guys were able to survive last year with COVID? Just put your head down and get through it, to be honest. I mean, like, I, I think up and down, you know, from, from our, our administrators to our athletic trainers to, to the strength and conditioning and to the, to the coaches. Like, so our protocol was we could practice in groups of six all year long. So we had 36 guys on our team. That's groups of six. You got to clean the mat in between each group. Go again. Uh, you know, and I, I equate it to, hey, Zeb, when you went and wrestled and you were on uh, on a team and you left Friday night and um, drove there, got there, got in the hotel, and you stayed in the hotel all day long and you wrestled Saturday night, how'd you wrestle generally? If you didn't get a workout in, you just stayed in the hotel. Not great. Not great. Those guys did that for nine months. You know, you had to quarantine in your room and all that stuff. We didn't, we never, we didn't have one in-person class last year. We were online the whole year. So those guys did that every day. And it was a grind for them. And I, I really commend them for doing what they did. It was super tough, but guys got another year, right? I guess that there's a silver lining. Guys did get another year. Like, you know, if you were a fifth-year senior last year, you had an opportunity to come back this year, right? Did you have Correct. many guys do that? And what did your athletic department department say to you as far as can you fundraise their scholarship money? 
what was the money situation with that? And did you even have any guys come back for a, a sixth year? We, we do. Mario Ginn's coming back. Uh, we had a couple other guys with that, that could have had that opportunity. Uh, one guy had a commitment to the military. You know, we called Biden. He wouldn't let him out of it. So he's, he's not, he's not coming back. Uh, another did he, guy. Hey, did he pick up when you and, called? <laughs> he's got my, no, he didn't actually. Yeah, but, uh, he blocked you. Uh, uh, <laughs> two other guys. Um, one of them graduated, want to get on with his life and get a job. And the other guy, uh, you know, he, he would just kind of play with the injuries the last couple of years and, and wanted to get on as well. So uh, Mario again is, is taking advantage of it. Um, as far as the athletic department goes, uh, we were just in constant contact with them. Um, you know, since, since it was, it was that we were notified that we could do that. And, um, uh, I want to say, basically, the, the, they'll let us go over our 9.9. .9. We haven't really determined how the heck we're going to do that. If it's going to be, um, we're raising the money. It's coming out of our foundation account. The athletic department's going to going to give us that money or, or what. Um, I think we've got to get down the road a little bit farther and see what happens during the year to, to really make that determination. So Mario Guillen is a sixth year senior for you guys. He's actually in, he's in graduate school, right? Yep. And I'm going to tell you this right now. If you're on scholarship and you can have another year at wrestling, I don't know why you wouldn't unless your body, like you said, there's a guy who you had was just completely plagued with injuries. But if you can run that back another time, I think is Mario a two-time qualifier for you now? Two-time qualifier, yeah. He's a two-time NCAA qualifier for you. He's probably your top returner. Um, I saw at one point he wasn't going to come back, right? Then I see a couple, like a month later, he's coming back, right? I think he made a yep. great decision. What do you guys do to sway someone like that? And how are you able to convince Mario Guillen to come back for another year? Well, I, I think um, I, I don't really talk guys into stuff or, or not talk, talk, or talk them out of it. We just sat down and talked about, hey, what our thoughts were, what he could do. I, I think, you know, he didn't have the NCAA tournament that he wanted to have this past year. If he would have had that tournament, I don't know if he would return. Um, but he didn't have the, the tournament that he wanted to have, and he feels like uh, a lot of things are going his way. The MAC tournament's in Athens, Ohio this year. Uh, the, the NCAA tournament in Detroit, T Toledo's home for him, you know, uh, Perrysburg. So, um you know, he just feels like, man, uh, I can wrestle in my backyard a couple of times. I, I really want to do that. Yeah, I think that that, like you're saying, there's not much of a sell there. That's pretty easy. That's an easy one. Right? <laughs> it's an easy one. And you know what? Here, here's what's crazy about Athens. What are recruits like who come to Athens for the first time? Or they're like, you know, we all know there's the obvious confusion where people are like, oh, everyone thinks it's Ohio State, right? You get that initial confusion. They're not from the Midwest, right? Yep. What? Tell me what recruits are saying to you about Athens, Ohio, when they come there for the first time. Uh, you know what? I, I mean, it, it's kind of the hidden gem in Ohio, really. It's a beautiful campus. Um, and if you can get, get people on campus, the campus really sol solves itself. Obviously, you're going to get a great education here, uh, one of the top public schools out there. But it, it's a beautiful campus, all red brick buildings. Not too big, not too small. Um, I think it checks a lot of the boxes for a lot of people. I mean, it's like, a, like seriously, it's like what, it's what I think of when I go, like, watch a college movie. It's like what I think of when I'm, at, when I'm in Athens. I'm like, this is what they're writing movies about. They're writing movies like they're yeah. in Athens, Ohio. I'm not, I'm not like blowing smoke. It's, it's that man. When you, uh, when you think about college town, it's Athens, Ohio. Seriously, like they should just rent Athens, shut the campus down, shoot movies all <laughs> summer there. I, I'm not kidding. It, it's incredible, you know. And that was initially why I verbally uh, committed to you guys. And then my mom and dad just weren't – they weren't hot on it, man. They weren't hot on it. I came down one year and they had like these crazy riots because they closed the bars early. Do you remember when they used time to change. do that? Time change. Yeah, the time, time change. still happen? No. I, in all honesty, like, 
I, I'm not buying the whole party school thing. I, you know what? I, I mean, I, there's some parties that go on in Athens, just like there is everywhere else. But um, I, th- I think we got that reputation back in the day because of Halloween and the spring fests. Well, we were on, on quarters then, and all the fests were in uh, really June. We were still in school in June. And now we went to semesters. Halloween's still there. Uh, I, I, I don't, you know, it's hard for me to say if it's as big as it used to be or not. It's, it's still a pretty big event. But uh, the fest, since we're on, on quarters, when it was in June, it was awesome because Toledo was out, Bowling Green was out, Kent was out, and all those people came down here. And it was hot and it was sunny and it was, you know, now those fests are all in March and it's rainy and drizzly. Everybody else is in school. It's not that big a deal. How do you battle that? If, if a parent says that to you, right, is that literally what you tell them? Like, hey, we've had these things have shifted. They've changed. You're always going to have Halloween's the big deal in Athens. But how do you combat that if somebody tries to negative recruit against you and say, oh, what are they going on to Athens and do just party? How do you re- how do you how do you convince the parents that, no, we can still train here. We can still win. We, you can win an NCAA. Well, first of all, you, you can go to – you name it. You can go to Hocking College in Nelsonville and make that a party school if you want to, and and there might be two bars in Nelsonville. I'm not sure, um, but I I think a lot of it comes down to hey, what what did mom and dad do the first 18 years of their life? I mean, um, Zeb Miller without a doubt was raised right. You don't have to worry about that guy in Athens, Ohio. He might have a little fun, but he's not going to go crazy. If wrestling's important to him, to him, and 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 you want to be an all-american national champ all those things it's not really a factor so you know you guys sometimes people will try and use that against you but i mean we've obviously seen the proof the proof is in the results man you guys can win you can win there you can get obviously a great degree and there's no question that you can't accomplish your goals in athens I, yeah, it just, uh, you know, because I know that you come and you, you're you really good at recruiting Northeast Ohio, right? Now I'm a Kent guy, and you have taken some of the best guys out of Northeast Ohio that I think that when it was Frank Romano at the time thought he was going to get, now Andres the head coach, I think that there's a lot of guys that thinks that thought he was going to get. You know, it's like Walters, right? You took, you stole yeah. Walters. He, he graduated with Walters dad. They went to high school together in Nordonia. You snatched him. Yeah. You took Cody Walters. Right out from underneath Jim Anderson. And I think that one hurt. I think that one was because, you know, they're, they're good friends, right? Those families are friends. How and do you I do enjoyed that? it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the guys were the toughest guys in the country. Two-time All-American, bookend All-American for you. You know, that didn't hurt, right? But um, That's how, right. Do you, how do you recruit Northeast Ohio so well? You know, we talked about you're doing a good job in Illinois and Iowa. You're, you're from Iowa. You're from Northeast Iowa. And Northeast Iowa was – in the quad city area, you're not too far from all those quad cities that are really good. And the Chicago land area, you've done a pretty good job recruiting those, that area, right? Yeah. Okay. How do you recruit? Well, Northeast I, I, Ohio? I think, uh, you know what? I, I don't really have a secret and Hey, this is what I do, but, but I do think it, it's work. You stay in contact with them. We have a beautiful campus. We have a lot to sell. Um, you know, and, and you sell them on, hey, you can come to Athens, Ohio and bust your hump for four or five years and, and hopefully get on the podium at the NCAA tournament and 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 make a run at being a national champion and uh, sell them that dream a little bit and um, good things happen. And I think, you know, obviously Northeast Ohio kids love Athens. Talk Jeremy Johnson a little bit. Another Northeast Ohio guy, two-time All-American for you. He was the Ohio Division One Coach of the Year last year at Avon High School. Uh, when you get a guy like that, right, like a guy who was a late bloomer in high school, and you get him on campus, when did you know that guy could be great and, and be a multi-time All-American for you? Uh, in all honesty, first first practice we had, a hard-working guy. I mean, he might be exhausted, and he's still going 100 miles an hour. I don't know, as a heavyweight, did he ever finish – lower than fifth in one of our runs and then 
every day, hey, it's a day off tomorrow. Coach, you come in and work on footwork at 6.30. Can you, you know, that's just the guy he was. He was always putting in an extra time. He was always working hard. Um, you know, he made the, the, the junior world team one year, uh, trained, trained every summer he was here, knew what his weaknesses were, and always tried to, to improve them. Another Northeast Ohio guy, Jake Percival, right? Four-time All-American for you, NCAA finalist. I mean, man, you just, you just kept stealing them out of Northeast Ohio, man. It was incredible to see it happen and how you can just keep doing it, man. And I know that it's super frustrating for Kent, you know, that's your rival. And there are guys within – all of them within 45 minutes of their campus, right? Like they can go home on the, on the evening and do their laundry and be back for class at night if they wanted to be, right? Yeah. So you just kept doing it, but having a guy like Jake Percival, is he really the one that made you guys jump another level? Do you feel like, and, and you, you won that MAC title in 2001 as team champions? Did he help you guys jump levels to something like that? Uh, I, I, in all honesty, what what he did for us is uh, unbelievable. You know, you you talked about we never had assistant coaches. So when Jake was wrestling here, we had a GA, probably four and a half scholarships. So then Jake wrestles, he gets on ESPN, he's in the NCAA finals. Um, he wrestles in the all-star meet twice. He does all the things, you know, he beat Bertine, I want to say by major in the all-star meet in St. Louis. Uh, so he, he did all those things for us. And then, the, you know, the, the administration started coming around a little bit. Maybe these guys need an assistant coach. Maybe we can get them more scholarship. Maybe we, you know, and, and um, that's kind of what started everything rolling for us. So you, you can't say what, what he really did for Ohio University. I don't even think he was on that. He, was he a red shirt on that 2001 team? Was he even in the starting lineup in the 2001 team? I don't think he was. Because uh, 2 was – no, O two 2 was his freshman year. I think he was just a red shirt. Yeah. But I, I think <laughs> – He made the team better, though. Before he left, too. Yeah, he made the team better without a doubt. Yeah. But uh, – That was right when it started. Uh, he started, though. I think we might have won it once before they left, too. I, you, you'd have – I don't know. I don't – Yeah, but don't you broke the up whole, the Central whole, Michigan dominance. You broke up that, that dominance, man. You, I mean, they had won – I want to say 93 to 2000 to 2000, they'd won. And then, oh, yeah. one, you guys knock them off in Athens at the combo. Wild they, stuff. They, they won a bunch in a row. That's crazy. And now we're going to be back to the Mid-American Conference being won by someone other than Missouri, right? So that's huge. I like the parody that's coming into the league this year. What do you think? Oh, I like it a lot. I mean, I, I think uh, there's a lot of good teams in the league right now. Who would you say is the odds-on favorite right now? I know you do the MAC coaching, the ranking. You got Central. Do you got Ryder? Who do you see as the, the odds-on favorite right now to win the MAC? I know, obviously, you know you guys can win. But who do you think is going to get voted to be the number one team in the MAC? I, I, I think it's hard. It's hard to put anybody in front of Central right now. They got Hildebrandt, who's an All-American. Simon's around at 12. Stencer was an All-American. I mean, that, that's three guys that are scoring points at the national tournament. Um, their 97-pounder, I think, is a beast. Just wrestles hard, wrestles hard, wrestles hard. So, uh, and, and obviously I'm missing some guys in there. Uh, that Lubbock kid's a stud. I think it's hard to put, you know, especially with, with I think all three of those guys, Hildebrandt, Simon, and Stencil, are all – all got a free year, right? Yep. So there will all yep. be six years. Yep. And they're all really you, good. You got three leaders like that, three three guys like that, man. You're going to be tough to beat. I think Northern Illinois has a similar set of guys too, man. They got some guys. You know, I mean. Northern Illinois, they do. They're, they're pretty damn good. Yeah. I mean, I love it. I, lo I like what Clarion – I like Clarion. I like all the PA schools. You know they're just tough anyway. I mean, yep. it's just, you're, you got a good conference. I like Ryder, you know, the, the furthest team, East, well, George Mason. But I like both those teams. George Mason, Mason's on the – they're trending up. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's just – I'm excited. I get to talk to Stutzman next. 
I'm sure there'll be some energy and some nutsmen coming out there because he's, he's nuts and he's out of his mind, but I like that. I like that. I like that, that guy thinks be, he can win every year. I like that. He'll be swinging on a Red Bull, too. <laughs> he'll be all jacked up. But, uh, Joel, <laughs> just real quick, you know, we have you on the Barbarian Hour. We could sit and talk about you being a nine-time uh, U.S. national team member. How many years were you second? We're going to get to the team preview, I promise, because I want to hear that. How many times were you second to Baumgartner? Uh, a lot. Uh, I, you know what? I, I, that's been a long time ago. You know, I mean, it was a, it was a great time, and I had some a lot of great, great experiences, and I owe, I owe Bruce a lot from uh, what he did for me, but uh, um, n- never really got close. <laughs> You know, I, I mean, I, I got close, but I, I never, never was in a, in a position to beat him. I, uh, we had some great workouts, and there, there were times in workouts I, I hung one on him here and there, but never really, never really on, uh, in competition. I, uh, Shane Sparks says Flow Wrestling is doing a top 100 USA wrestlers. And he asked, yep. me, he goes, who's, who's your top, you know, give me your 10. When I, I misunderstood him and I started naming like Uregan and the Batirov brothers and I started naming all these Russian guys and the Satyev brothers. He goes, no, Americans. And I don't think a lot of people have Bruce in their top three and it blows my mind. What Bruce Baumgartner did, he was a four-time Olympic medalist at heavyweight, 13 times medalist in the world, two-time yep. Olympic gold medalist. And I, don't, I just don't think the guy gets the respect he's due. Would you agree with that? Oh, I, without a doubt, without a doubt. I mean, it, he to me, he has to be in the conversation the greatest American wrestler. Mount Is Rushmore. he or not? That, that that's de, that's debatable, but he has to be in that conversation. He's on the Mount Rushmore. Yeah, There's I mean, no you question. think about like you think about guys right now. You 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 think are are beasts. All right, uh, David Taylor, guy's a stud, right? He's won one Olympics and one world championship, and he's been out of college how long? Yep. Couldn't beat Burroughs. Yeah. I mean, but I was college eight years. He couldn't beat Burroughs. All right. It's crazy. You know, but he, Bruce Baumgartner had eight, eight world medals at that point in time. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. It's crazy, man. You know, Kyle Snyder is a stud, but he hasn't medaled in every world championship since he graduated. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, I mean. It, it, it's hard to beat. They, uh, and, and you, you know, you look at some of the epic things he wrestled in. He wrestled in the Goodwill Games, and, and um, I think he beat Gobachevili in that. He wrestled in that duel in New York City. He maybe he lost to Gobachevili there, beat Gobachevili in, uh, in Seoul. Um, you know, uh, it, it's 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 honestly pretty amazing the things he did. And I don't think people understand that you guys are professional athletes, man. You still have this like amateur athlete label, but you guys are professional athletes. That's what the people don't get, right? How is your body with all the training that you did, you know, nine time US national team member behind Bruce Bumgardner, the thirteen time, you know, world medalist, multiple time Olympic gold medalist. How is your body training with that guy with well for well over a decade, you know, being a D1 and say finalist, then being a D1 coach for 24 years. How is your body? Uh, you know, it, it's, it's not great, but it's not terrible. I mean, I got sore knees and sore hips, uh, but, 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 you know, I enjoyed every minute of it. And I'd do it again. So you, when you were at 275, did you have to cut any weight or were you like 260, 265, 270? What were you? I could not gain weight back then. Now I can't lose it. But back then I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't gain it. Uh, I wrestled in the NCAA finals at 235. Probably wrestled most of my international career somewhere around 245. Which is not optimal when you're giving up that weight and those guys can move how those guys can move, right? Yeah. It's unreal. It's unreal. Yeah, because I saw you work. I saw you think you were working with uh, Jeremy Johnson one time, and I was like, man, Greenlee can still freaking move. It's unbelievable. And you have, no, you have zero joint replacements, right? Yeah, none. You're a massive human being, right? 
and you have zero joint replacements. I was with Flynn, Tim Flynn last month. That man has two uh, uh, robotic hips. Legit. He's old, though. He's old, yes. though. Hold on. No. <laughs> no. Are you 55 or 56? How old are you? 55. He's 57. He's two years older than you and 140 pounds less. So I've got time. I've that's got time. amazing. See, yeah, you're, you're, you've got like genetic joints or something. That's like a genetic freak thing you got because most people, when they're a big guy like you, they punish their body like you have. Normally, they don't. They wear their joints out, and they, you know, because now you're over three hundred. Are you over three hundred pounds now? Yeah. I mean, dude, that's hard. That's hard on your joints, and you can still shoot a shot. That's incredible. You still move like a little person. It's incredible, Joel. Well, it's getting harder and harder every year. I'll say that to, to take a good shot. <laughs> oh man, my knee would explode right now. I think, and I'm not even on the Joel. I'm not even in Joel's. Joel's. Uh, I'm not even in the Joel Big Hoss. Big Hoss, 300 pound range yet. Um, let's talk team. Let's talk Bobcats. Let's talk where you guys go this year after a really difficult year last year with COVID. How many qualifiers last year? Just Mario? What? Just, just Mario. Mario, right? So just Mario qualified last year. He's back again this year. Is it going to be 33 or 41? 33. So 33. Start at 25 for me. What we can talk about about Mario, uh, Mario Guillen. But who are you going to have? Uh, what guys are you looking at for 25 this year, Joel? Well, I, I, think, I, I think the first two guys would be Oscar Sanchez, um, Genoa, Ohio, and then Tommy Hoskins is a transfer from Oklahoma. Um, wrestled at uh, Dayton Christian, right? So, uh, two guys at twenty-five. I, I think um, I don't know who did who did really say is going to be the guy there just yet, but I think it's going to it's a great situation for us. We got two guys that are capable. Uh, Oscar obviously wrestled in the MAC tournament for us last year. Um, I know Tommy's been here a few months now, and I I know he works hard. I know he wants to win. I know. Uh, he'll do anything that you ask of him. So it's a great situation for us. Um, 133, uh, Mario Guillen, uh, and Gio De Sabato. So another great situation with two guys that I, I think can go out there and compete with anybody. Um, obviously, you have to give the, the nod to Mario right now, being a two-time qualifier. 141, uh, uh, Kyron Hagen. Um, is has had a, a little bit of a rough stretch in two years, but I think he's as talented as anybody. Was a top 60 recruit coming out of high school, uh, out of Eureka, Missouri. His twin brother, uh, Alec, at 190 or 149. Boy, I just gave him a promotion, made him a big guy, <laughs> but 149. <laughs> um, uh, you know, he was a national qualifier for us two years, got hurt last year, and was out most of the year. 157 is uh, Jordan Slifko. He's ranked in the top 33 last year at times. A little bit hurt going into the MAC tournament. Wasn't Didn't have a great tournament, but um, has put in some work. I think he's doing pretty well. Um, you know, behind him at that weight, Colton Jezero, uh, a PA kid. Uh, Peyton Keller was a high school national champ, state champ from Warren right down the road from Athens. Uh, Austin Mullins from Heber Heights Wayne. So we've got a, a bunch of guys at that weight as, as well. Uh, Yinger at 165, um, runner up in the MAC two years ago. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, uh, oh, uh, Kamal Adewume after, after Yinger at that weight. 74, Logan Stanley. Uh, guy that I think is, is, uh, is going to have a great college career, Sal Pride. Um, back, you know, those two guys at 174. 84, Carson Brewer and uh, Zane Lehman. And Brewer, I think, you know, had a great year last year. It was really starting to hit his stride at the end of the year. Had a, um, had a, a nice top 30 win at the end of the year. And then the week of the MAC tournament, messed up his ankle in practice and couldn't wrestle. Uh, uh, Jordan Greer at 197. Uh, Avon kid is doing real well. Um, love that kid. Super hard worker. Heavyweight. 
Jordan Ernest was a qualifier two years ago, and then uh, uh, Jacob Padilla from Hubert Heights Wayne. So Greer is from Wadsworth, right? No, no Greer's, Greer's, Greer's from, from Avon. Avon. Ernest is yeah, from Wadsworth. Yes. So once again, Joe Greenlee pillaging Northeast Ohio recruiting. Well, I, th- I think everybody. It's not just me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. I think it's the best thing ever. I love hearing. I'm like, whenever I get like a complaint from Andresi, I'm like, dude, have you been to that place? It's amazing. Like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Jimmy you- doesn't. Yeah. Jimmy, Jimmy doesn't complain. Why, why doesn't Jimmy complain? I, I'm just saying, you said when Jimmy complains to me, I said, Jimmy doesn't complain. Jimmy complains because you steal all those guys. I love it. I think it's amazing. I but the you know, uh, what's crazy is Sal Perrine's from Jimmy's high school. <laughs> you know that, right? Man, I, I, that guy has impressed me since that he's guy's been a freak here. athlete. I mean, those guys are he horses. Is a, he's a freak athlete. He's a no nonsense. Put your head down. Work hard. Um, I don't know if I've heard him say two words. If, 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 uh, unless I asked him a question. So, uh, uh, I absolutely love that kid. Like a powerful freak too. He can probably deadlift your weight room. Yes. He's so strong, dude. Like really strong. And he won an unbelievable weight class last year at the state tournament. That was a crazy weight class. Yeah. He, he was at the top of the heap at a, a, a dual tournament I was at. He beat the Evans dude from Elyria, who's at Indiana now. He beat Hivner. He beat Broski from Dublin Kaufman. And he or Dublin, uh, yeah, Kaufman. He beat all these really then, then good the guy from guys. Brexville too. At that the tournament, freaking guy from Brexville. Hey, he won that match seventeen to fourteen. <laughs> 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 took the guy down like literally took the. It was Rizzo, is the guy's name from Brexville. Yeah, he took yep. the guy down. 16 times, I think, or not 16, eight, eight or 10 times, eight times, the guy caught him with like a whip back and caught him for a two and two, and that's why it was 17, 13. Yeah. All the other points are escapes. He gave the that's guy insane. nine of the 13 points. I'm like, what's going on so, here? It's crazy. But, yeah, that guy's, that guy's really good. I like him for an upside. Obviously, Sanchez, you know, I'm partial to the Northwest Ohio guys because I'm from Northwest Ohio. Uh, Hoskins from uh, Legacy Christian and Dayton. He went to Dayton Christian as well. He's at both he yep. state titles at both places. So I'm impressed, Joe. I'm excited to to see the Bobcats get out there. I'll tell you what. All I'm seeing is a big, ginormous silhouette at this point. Well, I can turn on a light. Turn. Give me a little light right now. Can you give me a little light? I want a little light. I got you. I love it. Hey, are both of your kids uh, uh, in college? No. Your son's a graduate. Well, my son is a graduate. He was home. Um, how's that? Is that better? No, it's just backlight. It's you got to turn, it. You gotta turn it. There, I got you now. Your son lives in Florida, I could swear, right? Your son lives in Florida? Yep. Is he still there? Yep. Fort he Myers, just went right? home. To... Yep. What's he doing down there? Naples area. Hi, he works for a company called Salesforce and uh, you know, hopefully making big money and he's got an extra room in his house so his dad can come down in the wintertime. That's what I'm talking about. That's <laughs> what I'm talking about. Okay, so uh, your daughter, what's your daughter do? She's uh, in really her last year at Ohio University. Okay. Do you guys get the tuition waiver? Is that one of your fringe benefits? We do. That's awesome. Because I know Coach yeah, Anderson gets it at Kent State. So that's huge for you guys as far as uh, – a fringe benefit. And I know a lot of the coaches do get that. I don't think uh, Bono gets it at Wisconsin. How wild is that? I, I would guess to most of those big schools, they don't, they're not giving it. I don't know that when I was at Northern Iowa, um, I want to, I want to say they gave you like 50% off. That was it. Or wow. yeah. They don't need you, I guess. That's crazy. No, that's true. <laughs> they just don't need you, but okay. So I guess my biggest question you know, for you moving forward is, and when I say biggest question, I mean this, because uh, I'm going to ask Nutsman next. I got this question for Andrusy. How many years does Joel Greenlee have left on on the ticker to be the head coach? You're 55 years old. 
You're 24 years into Ohio University as the head coach. How many years do you – how many more years do you feel productive doing this? We obviously know you can still win at a high level. How many more years do you see yourself doing this for the Bobcats? That, that, it's really a tough question to answer, to be honest, because uh, when I was in college, I thought, man, there's no way you can be a college coach when you're 50 years old. Well, that was five years ago. Um, so, I, you know, now my kind of standard answer is there's no way you can do it when you're 60 years old. I'm 55 now, so I would put, I would put a number at five. How many years? You know? do, you, do you just need 30 years in the retirement system? Are you PERS? I'm stirs. You're stir. Oh, you're stirs too. I'm stirs. Twenty five. You just need twenty five. Yeah. So you just need one more. Yeah. We could see Joel Greenlee fade off into the sunset after one more year of this. Is that is that a possibility? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You know what I like to do for hobbies. Uh. Ride horses, fight work. bears. I don't know. Work, w work. I love it. I enjoy that. You know so, what I started uh, doing, Joel? I'm on your level. I'm yeah. your, I'm on your level. I started splitting wood with an axe. I know. I see all this man stacking. stuff on your Twitter and everything else. I love stacking it. Well, I don't love stacking it, but my, uh, I kept having chimney fires, and my chimney sweeps like, dude, you can't all have all this wood on the ground like a hillbilly. You got to stack it. So you got to have yeah. your wood off the ground a good four to six inches because it's like a, it's just a sponge and it sucks all the wood up. Well, I burn so much. I burn a couple cord every winter. I was burning wet, you know, green wood. And he's like, you got to split it. You got to open it up, which I know you got to season your wood, but I was just such yeah. a maniac. I was like, but then in May, the end of May last year, I had one that I heard it. You know, like, you know what a chimney fire sounds like, don't you? Oh, yeah. Like a locomotive, like a jet taking off. And I went out and it was stuck. The, like, the creosote was, like, stuck at the top of it and just burning in the screen, like bright, bright, oh. bright, bright red. It's like, yeah. We had, a, we had a wood burner. That, we had a wood burner. That's basically how we heated our house for uh, probably 10 years, you know, in, in, in Athens. And, uh I don't know. I loved it. You know, you could, we had the sliding glass door open, middle of winter, wood burner, furnace was never running. It was awesome. I love it. I, just what you just said. I love that. When we go to my brother Chad's house, you got to open windows, you know, when it's 15 degrees out because he's just got it. Yeah. That's his furnace. My brother Chad has a wood burning furnace and he's got a bobcat, a skid steer. He just drives yeah. in pallets of wood and he drops it right in his basement. He's got like an open door. So yeah. that's how my brother Chad, they're not on, um, and I think, I don't know if you guys are like this, they're not on natural gas infrastructure. It's all propane in Oak Harbor, where I'm from. They, they're not on a lot of the, the natural gas infrastructure. They weren't, at least, and I, my brother Chad is still not, and I know my brother Ferd was not, but he moved houses. My brother Tate is on, but they're on, all those people are on propane. So that means a truck yeah, has to bring you propane. We didn't even have propane. We just had – our furnace was electric if we used the furnace. So no natural gas gas to the house. <laughs> awesome. I, I like – I'm just a – I'm a wood-burning guy. I love it. But uh, do you think raising a family in Athens did – you, did you enjoy raising your family in Athens, Joel? Oh, I loved it. I mean, you know, there's, there's – uh, obviously, I think that the Athens school system is a great school system. Um, uh, you know, there's plenty of things for the kids to do, uh, you know, as far as uh, uh, hiking, mountain biking, you got the school, the, the university there with all the, all the things that, that, that it offers. Um, we, we, we like to boat and water ski and all that stuff. We're 25 minutes away from the Ohio River, uh, you know, so, so I, I thought it was a great place to raise our kids. Uh, it's, it's like anywhere else. I grew up in Waverly, Iowa. My parents thought it was a great place to raise their kids, and I wanted to get out of Waverly, in, in, you know, in the worst way when I graduated. I think uh, our, you know, our kids are in the same boat, you know. Um, obviously, Walker, Walker hates the winter and wants to go somewhere warm, and uh, Maddie, you know, would like to graduate and go to a bigger city. So, But it was a great place for him to grow up nonetheless. Can I just talk to you about the Joe Burrow paradox, or as I like to call it, the Joe Burrow effect? 
right? You just mentioned yep. the high school. Joe Burrow went to Athens High School, right? Yeah. And, and I was talking to uh, – it was like Kelly Moffat. I was climbing a mountain with uh, Kevin. Kevin Roberts was the assistant coach at Oregon – What was the yeah. assistant coach at Oregon State. His brother-in-law, Kelly Moffat, great guy. Wrestling coach guy, great guy. His brother's the head coach at Coeur d'Alene High. We are having this conversation, and I was like, you can be good in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And, and he's like, well, yeah, I know you can be. And he's like, you know, they got a good football player or something. I go, no, you can be good in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. You can be good in Waverly, Iowa. Just like you can be good in Athens, Ohio. That guy didn't have to go to St. X. He didn't have to go to, to Pickerington North. He didn't have to go to Pickerington Central. He didn't have to go to St. Ignatius or St. Edward. That guy went to Athens High School. And that guy was the greatest. He led the greatest college football team of all time. Was a backup at Ohio State, a graduate transferred, and were, they were runner up. They were runner up when he was there, right? They think they lost like Hillier Davidson or something in the state finals, didn't they? They were runner up. Uh, they, they lost to uh, Dave, Toledo Central Catholic. Is that maybe? who they lost to? Yeah, no, I think you're right. You're right. Um, yeah. It was, it was, it was actually Walker was in the same class as Joe. And uh, so that was Walker's senior year. But but is that is that a real thing I just said? Can you be good wherever you're at? Can you be great wherever you're at? I believe that wholeheartedly. Like that's, you know, I believe believe that since the beginning of time. Like when I went to Waverly, we weren't great at wrestling. Uh, we, we were far from great. And now they're good. They won, I think, two or three state championships in a row. Probably six or seven overall. Um, we we I was the only guy to qualify one year when I was in high school. So I I've thought that since the beginning of time. I thought when I got recruited, I got recruited by Iowa State, Iowa, Northern Iowa, Nebraska, some other other places, and um, that's kind of why I I chose Northern Iowa was it, I just thought I could be good wherever I went, and um, I I believe that you know. Gable didn't make anybody great that didn't want to be great. You know, Kale doesn't make anybody great that doesn't want to be great. Neither does, you know, John Smith, Bono, Jimmy, me, Tom Borelli, you know, Hangy. You, you have to want to be, be great. and You can go wherever and be great if you really want to. Yeah, no question. I think Joe Burrow proved it on, like, such a, 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 a macro level, though, like, because – because you saw this guy from Athens, Ohio, he led the greatest college football team of all time, right? They're 15 and 0. They crushed every record. They won every major award, crushed in the national title game, and just just got the job done. You know what I mean? And then he went. He was the number probably the one best, pick. Probably best offense of all time. No, no, no. It's not. It's literally statistically is, I believe. And and yeah. it's not really up for debate. The guy did it, and he did it from Athens, Ohio, and he. And the thing about it is he went to Ohio State. He tried that route, and it just, you know, and he was behind some great guys, right? He was behind some really good quarterbacks. But what did he mean to Athens, do you think? Because he, he really credited Athens and all the things where he gave speeches. He talked about Athens, Ohio. He didn't say Lincoln, Nebraska, because they came from Lincoln, didn't they? Uh, I don't think Joe ever lived in Lincoln. I okay. think he, he – Dad did. He, he, he came from Ames. He was born in Ames. And Ames his dad okay. was coaching at Ames High or Iowa State at the time. Okay. So he didn't say Ames. He says that, you know, this is Athens, Ohio. What do you think that meant to your guys' community? Uh, I, I think it means a, a ton to the community. Like, uh, you know, he, he mentioned the, the Athens food bank or kids didn't have money to go to, to or money to eat before they went to school and all that stuff in his Heisman speech. Within a week, the food bank raised five hundred thousand dollars. They've never done anything close to that before. I think that I think half a million bucks. That's amazing. That's amazing. And and you guys are considered Appalachia, aren't you? Yes. That's crazy. That blows my mind that a person like that, a guy who played high school football in Athens, with a speech. Half a million bucks. It's like a phenomenon. It's incredible, man. Uh, it it's, was it was it was incredible to watch. Unreal. You know, like 
So it was a big deal around here, obviously, and it was on the news and in the paper, and, and it was incredible to watch just, you know, I was thinking, man, maybe he gets 100000 bucks or something like that, and it just kept going and going and going. Yeah, it's awesome. It's good to see that. Um, last thing I got for you, we're about to hit overtime. Can you give me a little bit of overtime, just a couple minutes? Heck, anything to keep Stutzman off the air. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's he's in line too. He's in line. I don't want you guys to fist fight, so I can't have that. But um just real quick, you guys got something coming up at the beginning of October. You got a, a store going live. Who are you guys going live for here in overtime? Who are you guys going uh with your team gear this year at Ohio University Wrestling? Barbarian apparel. Uh, listen. It cannot be more appropriate to have you on the Barbarian Hour knowing that Ohio University is doing their store. I'm probably going to find a way to put the link somewhere down here and make sure that uh, we get your guys' uh, gear out there. And I obviously got to order some too. You know, I got to wear some Bobcat gear. You've given me some. It's old. I'm fat. I got big. I grew out of it, whatever it may be. But uh, I got to get some bigger, more Bobcat Bigger sizes, Zeb. I can get you something. I can get you something. <laughs> Now I've got a, I got a few. Uh, I've uh, I've talked to them numerous times, and and I've got a few items in their of the gear that which I think is like their t-shirts are awesome. Um, I think our you know our, our fans, our guys are really going to like that gear. They've come up with some great designs for us, and uh, we're we're excited to roll that out. Awesome, Joel. Thank you for being on the Barbarian Hour. You got anything else for me? We good? No, I'm, you know, I'm excited for, for this upcoming season. Hopefully we get back to uh, uh, a lot more normal than we have in the past. We're excited for to put, to put it with what we think is a super talented Bobcat team on the mat. And we're excited for, we got some uh, great duels. Um, you know, we've got Indiana at home, West, West Virginia at home, obviously uh, a full Mac schedule. We've got Navy coming to, uh, to Athens as well. Um, looking forward to a, to an exciting year. Am I allowed to come down still? Heck yeah. I love it. I love the invite. I always do get really warm welcomes and I'm treated very well in Athens. So I appreciate it. Joel, thank you for the time. Nutsman's next. You have... Hello wrestlers and coaches, I'm Teague Moore. I spent 20 years coaching at the Division I level in the NCAA, 15 of those years as a head coach. During that time, I helped a lot of wrestlers and parents navigate the recruiting process. I've now opened my own consulting business to do just that, to help you navigate the recruiting process. There's a lot of unanswered questions. How do scholarships work? What program would be right for my son? Or better yet, what coach would be right for my wrestler? I can help answer these and many other questions. Feel free to email me or call me at the information listed below and we can set up your first consultation today. I look forward to working with you and helping you make the right choice.